I'm just trusting God that I am able to put this out the way he put it in and that everyone is able to receive from it today. Uh, the title of the message, Father God, Our Father. The purpose is to bring the magnanimous God into an intimate relationship with each one of us. And I want to start with, uh, you know, I thought I had a, I thought I had a good father. My dad was a strong man. He, uh, from New Orleans, he was brought up on a plantation. He was a slave child, but he worked his way out of that and served in the military. And from the military, he went on to start a hairstyling business in California. He had three shops. He had two on the military base and one in the civilian sector. And that's how he raised nine kids. Um, and so, yeah, he, yeah. Thought he was, he did all that with a sixth grade education. So, you know, when I think about my dad, um, he believed in spankings. And I received my fair share. But here I am today. Here I am today. Um, I'm the baby of the family. I have uh, five brothers and three sisters and then me. Uh, Dad was a strong man. I always saw him, he is, you know, I mean, I'm six foot tall, two, even today I'm 200 plus. I don't want you to tell you what I weigh. Um, but my dad was like six one, and he weighed like 225 pounds, 230 pounds, all of the life that I knew him. And he really sewed into us the best that he could with the education that he had. And I didn't understand it. I thought he was the hardest man on the face of the earth. He taught me, he said, boy, if you can, if you can push a broom, you can make a dollar. Push a broom the rest of my life? That wasn't, that wasn't it. If you can push a broom, you can make a dollar. How many people will push a broom today to make a dollar? Kids will not do so. They're looking for mom and dad to hand it out. I thought that I had a good father. And as I grew and grew and got older and became a father, I found out that the definition of a man changes with stages of life. And becoming a father, I realized what my dad was going through. And even today, my own kids, my boys, are finding out <laughs> what I went through, what we have gone through. By the way, this is my beautiful wife, Lorinda, right down here. Amen. So if you see me look down there, I'm just checking in to see if I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay, so I want to... Um, in, in talking about our earthly manner, our earthly fathers, uh, the ladies, you're not left out of this, okay? Because you have great responsibilities as well. Don't go to sleep. You guys have, ladies have great responsibilities as well. And this message, although it's Father God, our Father, um, as I was processing this whole thing and thinking about my dad, thinking about me being a dad, and now my boys being dads. I was like, you know, that's pretty interesting that you would say you're our father when you are the father of Jesus. How can we now be, we're not, I mean, we're you could say that we're related by blood because Jesus, God created us all and all of that, right? 
But when we look at the line in our everyday life, my family is different than your family. So I'm not the father of your children. You're not the father of my children. So how does that all work? Hmm. God's plan is bigger than us, and we can't lean to our own understanding. And I'll get into Romans a little bit later. I'm jumping way ahead, like to the end of my message already. <laughs> so let me back up. I'm getting excited up here, and it's, uh, yeah, a little nervy. So here we go. Father God, our Father. Some of the names of God, I looked that up, the Hebrew names of God in the Old Testament, and there's like 32 names. 32 names to describe God. And that's in the Hebrew. And then it takes like five to seven words in the English language to equate one Hebrew word. So that's crazy. The, the first one is El, translated God, just E-L, translated God. The sec, you know, and I'm not going to read all of these. There's like 32 of them. It would take me forever. Elohim, you've heard that before, right? God is creator. God who created everything. Everything. Oh, well, I made that shelf. Yeah, but you use God's wood to make the shelf. Oh, I made that car. No, that metal belongs to God. It came out of his earth. I made the computer, all the components came from earthly elements. So everything that we have, God created. Adonai, master or Lord. Interesting point here. Adonai is a plural name, so it's more than one. But when you um, take, uh, when you say Adon, that's you or I, the man. Or the Lord. So God has plenty of names. Yahweh, Jehovah, Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Rophe, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. How many of us have the peace of God working in us? Amen? That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, amen. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Je or Shama. Shama. The Lord is there. Wherever you go, he's there. Okay? Um, let's see. Abir, mighty one. These are all the different names of God. Yesha, Savior. Gaol, Redeemer, to buy back by paying a price. Mm. Tzaddik, Righteous One. Zur, God, Our Rock. Melech, King. So God always was, always is, and always will be. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the father of all creation. He's omnipotent. He's present everywhere at the same time. Omniscient. He knows. Oh, that's interesting because he said knowing everything. Not that he knows everything. He's presently knowing everything. Presently knowing. Omnipotent. Having unlimited power. Unlimited power. What would you do with... No, I don't want to ask that question. God is all in all. All of these names and more. All of these roles are in him. And more. Do we understand that with all the glory and majesty that is due his name, he desires... Fellowship with you and me. That's pretty amazing to me. I mean, when we just process who God is, 
and that he desires fellowship with you. I know where I've been. I know what I've done. But God desires fellowship with me. Hmm. So this message is framed. <coughs> I like to think that this message is framed for the fatherless. I want to I dive in deep there. The fatherless, the parentless, children in the world today. <coughs> so don't look, as I was thinking and processing this at home and praying over this, the Holy Spirit said to me, just remind the people not to look around the room for the children by age. What does that mean? Like, Holy Spirit, I'm not that sharp. In other words, God doesn't see us by age. He just sees us. He just sees us. We're all his children. At some point, we're going to be orphaned. My mother and my father are in heaven. I've been orphaned. Maybe some of you have lost your parents to tragedy. You've been orphaned. Maybe some of you don't have a father figure in the house. Or both of your parents, for whatever reason, are not with you. And you're being raised by an uncle or a grandma. It happens. It's life. It's where we're at. We're all children of God. Father God, the creator of everything, he is our father. Were you raised or are you being raised without a father figure in your home? Our father, in his redemptive plan, Father God, in his redemptive plan, sent his son to be the propiti propitiation. I got corrected on that pronunciation. I said propitiation is propitiation. I know, I'm just different that way. Um, what does that mean? It means to win or regain favor, the favor, by doing something that pleases God. So Jesus did something that pleased God. Ultimately, what was that? The cross. Well, that's rude. That's hard. That's mean. That's judgmental. He's a good God. How could he send his son to the cross? Um, win or regain the favor of God by doing something that pleases them. Even though it doesn't feel good, even though it hurts, and Jesus said that, he says, if this can be removed from me, take it. I don't want to do this, but not my will. Your will be done. And as a result of that, how many of us in this room are born again and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Amen? So that number is greater today than it's ever been. And it's going to continue to grow. You can't, there's no weapon that's formed against God that will prosper. You can't stop the church. It's going to continue to grow. So Jesus, the son of man, crowned king of kings and made lord of lords. You know what? I'm just going to let someone else who said this better than I can say it. I'll let him say it for you. Let's watch this video real quick. King 
of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is lighter. I wish I could describe him, but yet he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Woo! Yeah! Amen. Do you know him? Do you know him? That's my king. As I said earlier, the message is framed for the fatherless and the parentless, and even unfortunate ones who've had their uh, earthly parents. Um, the question to you, though, how is your heart posture towards Father God? How do you see God? Do you see him as unrelatable because of his majesty, because of his power? That's not true. That's not true. He is absolutely relatable. We just have to humble ourselves and receive from him. See, in God's plan, Jesus came to redeem all of mankind to the Father. Maybe God knew a little something about relationship that we have with our earthly fathers being a representative of how we see him. Sometimes that earthly relationship clouds what God wants for us to have with him. Just a thought. Jesus followed the plan, and in the book of John, Jesus said to the disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. King James actually says, I will not leave you comfortless. I tried to look up that word 
orphans in the concordance to get a little better understanding. And it's in that text, it's not there. It's not in the concordance. It refers to lamentations. I didn't want lamentations. I wanted the book of John. So I started praying about it, talking to God while I was doing this. And he said, try the King James Version. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And that's where I got comfortless. So I looked up comfortless in the concordance. And guess what comfortless is described as? Orphans. God's so good. Yeah, just lets me know I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Anyway, he said, I will come to you. What is it to be comfortless? What is it to be an orphan? How do you qualify to be seen as an orphan or known as an orphan? It's to be without parents or both due to death or tragedy, like I said earlier. Well, Jesus said that he would not leave them orphans. The thing that caught me there was he's talking to the disciples. And he said, I won't leave you orphans. I won't leave you comfortless. Well, this was before he died. So Jesus spoke that before he died to the disciples. I know we have the book. We have the end of the story. So it's easy for us to get it. But I would love for you to imagine being a disciple at that time. Not knowing what was coming. Me and you, we, we get to read the book. We get to see the end of the story. But as a disciple in that day, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Could you imagine sitting around the table and thinking to yourself, I'm not an orphan. I got my parents. What do you mean you're not going to leave me an orphan? You can't leave me an orphan. I have, my, I have both my parents here. I'm, I'm good. Jesus was not talking about that. So here, in John 14, 18 through 29, there's a little bit of an explanation to this. He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. In what day? In that day, what day is he talking about? The resurrection. When he's raised again. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And Judas, not Iscariot, the one who betrayed him, said, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear, it's not mine. This is my father's who sent me. I don't know if that's not a description of family. I don't know what else is. 
if that's not a description of the father speaking to his children, because we're one with Jesus and Jesus is one with God and God is one with Jesus. So it goes up and back down and down and back up. If we know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are all the children of God. So he is not only creator. He's not only those names that we read earlier. He's also our father, Papa, Abba, Father. Verse 25, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, this is vital. This is important. This isn't Kirk. This isn't anyone in the audience. This is Jesus saying this. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. How important is it for us to have relationship with Holy Spirit? Amen? And there is a gift. There is an evidence of that relationship called speaking in tongues. It's a gift. And God offers that to you as well. Peace I leave, wait a minute, where was I? There we go, remembrance, all things to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you, give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. Is he going to the next city and coming back? No. Is he going across the ocean and coming back? No. He's going to the Father. He's going into the pit. He's going away. He's going to die. He's not going to be here in the physical anymore. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father for my father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it comes. That when it does come to pass, you may believe. So he just revealed to them, I'm telling you ahead of time that I'm going to die. I'm going to go away. So that when that happens, you'll see it and you'll believe it. So he gave us those, he gave the disciples at that time, those Warnings, those alerts, those awarenesses. So let me ask you a question. Was that just for the disciples? Was that just for the 12 that he was addressing? Okay, verse 20. I'm not saying this. I'm just reading what Jesus said. I do not pray for these alone, these 12 alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And look how far that's come. Look at how long that has traveled. Here it is today, 2024. And the word is still moving forward. That they all may be one. Mm. As you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, here we go again, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect 
in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Verse 24, Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you gave me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. How much closer can we get to God? There's no space between us. That's what the words are saying. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. There's no space. Father God is our father. He's Abba, an intimate father who desires relationship with his sons and daughters. And I'm going to close with this passage. It's in Romans Chapter 8, 14 through 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are, these are, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption Every one of us in this room that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior have been adopted. Amen? The spirit of adoption. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the good news is, although you don't have a father figure in your house, or you may have lost your father figure or your father along the way, your parents along the way, along this journey, you're not by yourself. You have a better father than the earthly father. I thought, I try to be, right? We try to be the best fathers we can be. We work hard. We provide. Yeah, we get upset. We get frustrated. I wonder if God gets frustrated. Why would he get frustrated at me? I'm a good guy. But he's our father. If you've been struggling with that, if you've been challenged with that, today's the day. Today's the day for you to have that encounter with God right here, right now. If you've been struggling with that, if it's been a challenge, I would love to ask you to come forward so we can pray with you. Guy, girl, adult, teen, it doesn't matter. Get up out of your seat and come on up so we can pray with you. And we can get that healing started in your, in your heart so we can get that heart posture changed so that you can look to Father God as your Father so that you can start to call him Abba. You can start to call him Dad. And you can begin to receive his goodness. So come on.
Get up out of your seat if you would. I know you're there. Thank you, Jesus. God's not going anywhere. He's here for you. It doesn't matter. And remember, Holy Spirit said, don't look around for the children by age. It doesn't matter how old you are. We're all children of God. And we feel like we've overcome certain things in our life, but Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're a good, good Father. You know what we have need of before we ask for it. You know what we have need of even though we won't ask for it. We praise you and we give you glory. The other invitation is if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we also have prayer partners up here to pray with you as well. And if you have any questions, if you need clarity on anything, scriptural, biblical, Spiritual, we have prayer partners to help guide you. And we will pray with you. So as we close, the prayer partners will be up here. They will remain up here. So feel free to come and talk to them. Father God, we just thank you for your word today. Thank you for the family being here. Thank you for the opportunity to share how good you are. praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.